Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. It is Sunday the 1st of July, which means it's officially the start of the new season in terms of contracts. So Naby Keita and Fabinho are officially Liverpool players, which feels very, very exciting and satisfying to say. So they will join up with training this week with the rest of the guys that aren't on World Cup duty. And I'm sure we're all going to be looking forward to seeing all the pictures, all the clips from that as we gear towards pre-season and the season that follows up. But today, as usual, we're talking about transfers and transfer rumours as well as the World Cup. So let's get into the first one, which is a new rumour, um, a name that always seems to be uh, banded about with uh, the Spanish uh, media. It's Lucas Vasquez of Real Madrid. Uh, the winger has been linked with Chelsea, Arsenal and AC Milan and thus, according to Spanish outlet Marca, um, apparently we're interested in making a move for him this summer. Um, he's obviously been with Spain uh, at the World Cup, but they went out today at the hands of Russia, so he'll be coming home. Um, he is supposedly happy at Real Madrid, so you know, whether they're going to be desperate to offload him, I'm not sure. I don't see why they would be because it's not exactly like he's going to be worth tons of money. He's not one of their star players. Um, and and would he even be a guaranteed starter at Liverpool? I mean, he made 16 starts in the league for Real Madrid last season, 17 off the bench. And I imagine it'd be similar numbers if he came to Liverpool because obviously the, the players we got on the wing are not going to be displaced anytime soon, especially by someone like Lucas Vasquez. I do rate him for four goals and seven assists in the league last season, one goal and two assists in the Champions League. Uh, the season before that, he managed two goals and seven assists in the league in 12 starts, 21 appearances off the bench. So he's a solid uh, player for the rotation of Real Madrid. And as I say, it would be the same for Liverpool. Um, we've been linked with Asensio as well. Are they realistically going to sell one of them? I don't know. I mean, maybe Vasquez could go, but Liverpool for me just doesn't feel like um, a link that is legitimate. So the links there is 27 years of age as well. So he's probably, you know, he's not going to improve much. You know, we tend to sign players that are around the 24 year old mark. You know, Mo Salah, Sadio Mane are around that age, um, which gives them years to develop, which is exactly what they've done. Um, so yeah, Lucas Vasquez, link with Liverpool this morning. For me, it's not one that excites me let me know your thoughts let me know if you think he would be a good fit at Liverpool and obviously that would be a potential replacement for Nabil Fakir who has been in the papers again today uh, another update this time from reliable sources so this is actually worth taking seriously Chris Bascom Paul Joyce and David Maddock have all kind of reported the same story uh, this comes after another report in the mirror it confuses me why the mirror commission articles from this guy uh, who, who uh, wrote the story about Nabil Fakir uh, being back on Liverpool's radar, only for David Maddock to come out a day later and shut it down. You know, we know David Maddock's a reliable uh, Liverpool guy for the mirror. Why don't they just trust him? But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Telegraph, Chris Bascom, I've got it in front of me. Liverpool have not spoken with Leon since calling off the transfer of Nabil Fakir last month. So for those that thought there might have been something going on behind the scenes while the World Cup was going on, um, whilst Liverpool wait for him to come back, Maybe us and Leon would have had some, some negotiations in the meantime. That hasn't happened. We have not spoke with the club at all. So they meant that when they said the World Cup would be the World Cup and we would not um, we'd do any negotiations in during that time, during that sort of uh, late June, early July period, we just let him get on with it, which, which is absolutely fine. He's very relaxed, Nabo Fakir. He's only been playing off the bench for France and he's done okay uh, in the time he's come on. Um, so the £53 million deal was cancelled at 11th hour following the France midfielder's medical. Um, and Liverpool didn't want to renegotiate at the time and they haven't tried to since. So they, they wanted him, he wanted them. As we knew, everything was agreed. He put pen to paper. The interview was done on the LFC website. Um, but yeah, that is literally the last of it. Nado Fakir. Uh, something might happen after the World Cup. I mean, there's been links with Man United as well. I think that might be manufactured um, just to try and uh, peak Liverpool's interest again. Um, but yeah, Nabil Fakir could well still be a Leon player. What do you think? Do you think uh, the fact we haven't gone back in for him during the World Cup is a problem? I, I, I think it makes absolutely no difference. I wouldn't have expected us to uh, be going in for him yet. Um, I think we'll wait for him to come back. I think we'll wait for the World Cup to be over so that we know where we stand with everything. That will still give us a good three weeks to negotiate all the rest of our transfers that we want to do. Goalkeeper, whatever else we try to do. I don't think there's going to be much. Chris Bascom's hinted at that. He said the club is still looking to add, but not much. Uh, it's well documented that Liverpool want a goalkeeper. The club has demonstrated that throughout his managerial career, he will not act to just satisfy 
a social media thirst for transfer activity. So a bit of a dig at the social media um, brigade there from Chris Brascom. Says he wants Alisson, but a deal has never looked close given his valuation and competition for Real Madrid. So even the goalkeeper situation, I mean, we, we could well be left with Loris Karius and no Nabo Fakir, which I know would absolutely infuriate all of my subscribers and a lot, well, a lot of Liverpool fans. It's very much reminiscent of last summer when we never signed Lamar, we never signed Van Dijk, we kind of left everything as it was in centre-back and um, with, the, with the exception of Salah, we didn't have much in terms of an attacking sense. So we left ourselves light last season. Um, I was not happy about it at the time, not signing a centre-back. Yes, Van Dijk was worth the wait. Did we pay for it slightly in the first half of the season? I think we did. We did really fall behind uh, the likes of Man City uh, in, in the, in the uh, title race. We, we were way out of it by the time Christmas came around. Maybe we wouldn't have been if we did manage to get Van Dijk in in the summer. Um, Will we, will we find ourselves in a similar position this time if, if Loris Karras makes one or two mistakes and we go in for a keeper in January? Maybe Alisson's valuation isn't as high or Madrid's interest has waned. Um, would we find ourselves in the same situation where we regret not just going one out in the summer? Is this a situation where we just need to go absolutely all out for Alisson? Uh, you know, forget the price tag. We, we went 75 million on Van Dijk. Should we just do that again for Alisson and get him in the bag? Um, you know, De Gea hasn't had a great World Cup, so maybe Madrid's interest in him isn't what it was. Maybe they're going to push for an Alisson deal. We don't know. Nagel Fakir, I think if, if there's a concern with the knee, as I've said, we've got to let, let that one go. But surely we do have to go still all out for an attacking player. I'm not going to complain too much if we don't, because we have added to the midfield. Um, and you have to trust the manager because he did get the Van Dijk thing right, albeit belatedly. Um, and we don't want to be buying for buying's sake. So it's a difficult situation. Uh, we know Klopp is very, very stubborn, and he's not one to um, go scatter again with his transfer approach, although Salah was an alternative to Julian Brandt, but he's not one to go to fourth or fifth choice on his list if he can't get number one or two. So we wait. We wait. Um, that's the latest. Lucas Vasquez linked. Nabil Fakir. Still no real confirmation either way on that same with the goalkeeper so we have to wait and see the clock still ticking the world cup is drawing to a conclusion we've still got a couple of weeks left it's been a phenomenal weekend of action the first four uh knockout games have been so intriguing in each uh in, in their own kind of different unique ways france argentina full of goals poor defensive play but quality goals i mean pavard's goal um Di Maria's goal and Bap's quality up front was awesome. And Uruguay versus Portugal was a great game. You know, Suarez and Cavani, that, that unique one two for the first goal there was awesome. Cavani's second was a great finish as well. Uh, you had the Spain upset earlier with Russia going through, which was just so intense. And then Croatia Denmark, which had so much drama, especially towards the end of extra time with Modric's penalty being saved. Um, and then heartbreak for Denmark at the end. It was great seeing like Peter Schmeichel uh, get so into it. Um, just real, real you know, scenes of jubilation and despair. Dejan Lovren advances to the quarterfinals of Croatia, so fair play to him. Uh, he's going deep in this tournament, and who knows, they could go all the way. They've got Russia in the quarterfinals. Um, then in the semi, and in the semis, they're probably going to have either England or Colombia, or maybe, well, obviously, or Switzerland or Sweden, but none of them are going to scare them. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But it's been a great World Cup, uh, and I can't wait for it to, I can't wait to see what it throws up next. We've got some great knockout ties still to come. I really do fancy Uruguay to make it uh, past France, and then if, obviously I picked Brazil before the tournament. I'm sticking with that, but God, Uruguay will give them a real, real game. And then the other side of the draw is wide open, so it's great. Uh, and it's really taking our mind off transfers, as it should do. Um, leave a comment with your thoughts on the current transfer situation at Liverpool. I'm sure you've got some strong opinions either way on the goalkeeper, on Fakir, on Lucas Vasquez. Let me know your thoughts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. Get in touch with me over there as well. Subscribe to the channel if you're new for more transfer news. And match day vlogs very soon as well. Chester away this Saturday. Can't wait for that. I'll see you soon.